Anthony Hartwig here with a Boardman softball player profile. We are joined by senior Maddie Weimer. Maddie, thank you so much for taking the time to join us for another player profile. Thank you so much, Anthony. Always fun to have you. And the first question we have to ask is, of course, it's senior season, which means you're doing everything for the last time. It's the last go around. How have you been dealing with the emotions that senior year kind of bring you? Um, my senior year has looked a lot different this year. Um, uh, I've been playing outfield recently, you know, the whole season um, compared to playing catcher all other of my three years. So it's looked a lot different. Um, it's been an emotional roller coaster, I'll say. Um, pretty upsetting that I can't catch this year, but I know it's for my health and safety. So, um, but I am happy about playing outfield and still being able to play and stuff. But it, it has been sad, you know, my last year. I can't believe it's already here. When did it sink in that it was your senior year? I mean, tonight's senior night, so I'm hoping that it's sunken in by now. But when did it kind of start to make it feel real that this is your last year? Honestly, it kind of hit me last night. Um, every single year, the underclassmen come in toilet paper, the seniors' houses. So when that happened, I was like, wow, like, we only have a few more games left. Like, this is it. This is our senior night, you know. Like, playoffs are in a few weeks here. Like, this is it. This is the end. You know yourself better than anybody. What do you think are going to be some of the things that go through your head and some of the ways you're going to feel tonight during senior night? Um, I'm going to feel emotional, you know, uh, just remembering all the seniors before me and then it's finally my turn, but more or less excitement, you know, looking forward to uh, the future and celebrating all the great things that I've done the past few years at Boardman. When we talk about seniors, we talk about leadership, and, and there's a lot put on the seniors as far as the leadership of the team, and it's a big senior class, too, that you're a part of. What's it been like to be able to lead this team and to be one of the more experienced seniors varsity-wise and, and to be able to just uh, take the next step of leadership this year as well? Um, I felt extremely blessed that I was one of the more experienced seniors um, and that I have a great uh, group of underclassmen below me right now. Um, I've really felt like I've tried my best to embody um, the leadership role that I've been handed, you know, just trying to help my underclassmen and um, prepare them for the shoes that they're going to fill for next year. But our senior class is insanely big this year with seven. You know, you already talked about not being able to catch this year and what kind of toll that took on you. Um, when, when that news kind of came out and you you were kind of understanding that you weren't going to be able to catch uh, for, for softball this year, what kind of went through your mind? How were you able to, to process that and then obviously get through it and, and still be a very productive member of the outfield and, and still have the good bat as well? Um, I feel like I almost just uh, kind of just accepted it, honestly. Um, I was more grateful that I was allowed to play, like, period. And um, I was, I'm extremely grateful that I was able to play this season. Um, I kind of, well, it happened over the summer during travel ball. So um, half of the season I ended up playing outfield. So I feel like the summer really helped me um, get over it. But the first few games were kind of rough. Um, just for me, you know, not not seeing myself behind the plate and seeing the game from a different angle. But, um, again, I am extremely grateful that I am able to play, though. Which means you had other catchers have to step up. Olivia Lasivita, the main catcher now. But you have, you have uh, Katie Timms, who stepped up a couple of times. How much have you helped them and, and try to guide them catching since you're a three-year catcher on the varsity level? Um, I feel like I've – you know, Liv's done such a great job this year. We're all so proud of her. You know, she's she's truly, like, stepped in my shoes, and she's overflowed them. Like, she's done such a great job, better than I could have ever done. Um, so we're all so, so proud of her. But, yeah, she, she's been doing very good. Um, I feel like I've trusted her. We trusted Kate. Um, Kate was playing for us against our two games against Fitch this past week. Um, Olivia had food poisoning along with her twin and Ava Freeborough. So um, that was a little rough. But, yeah, um, Olivia and Kate have been doing such a great job. Um, I feel like I've just been putting – my full trust in them and same with the entire team, you know, putting our faith in them and um, same with our pitchers, Gabby and Tori and Addie Kowalczyk, you know, 
we've all just been putting our faith and trust in them and they've been showing up every single time for us. You know, you talked about the seniors before you. I'm, I'm wondering if you could pick out a couple of seniors that have really shown you over your career how to be a senior leader and have kind of guided you to the senior that you are now. Yeah, so um, going back to my freshman year, um, Nina Scavelli and Catherine Alforo, you know, they they were truly like, they were um, very special seniors when I was a freshman and they were such great role models for me. Um, same with Morgan Turney. You know, they all just really showed me the way, kind of set the tone for the next four years for me. Um, same with going on to the following year. Um, we had, uh, uh, sorry, we had uh, Dana and Jenna Alexa, Jenna Matic, you know, all of those girls, like Maddie Lester. There was so many that year. But again, they really just showed me the way. And especially last year, um, I was so extremely close with those seniors last year. Kimmy Goski, Natalie Davis, Maddie Drubecki. Um, I was very close with them, so it was sad to see them go. But um, yeah, I feel like we did fill their shoes this year. Um, but yeah, it was, it was upsetting to see them go. But, <laughs> you know, uh, they really just set the tone for us, though, honestly. I mean, going forward, we really, yeah, we really just went along with what they said. In the last couple of years, I've seen plenty of those seniors of the past come back and be at your games and support this team and to pour back into the program. What does that mean to you that, you know, people that have left the program that have led you are now coming back and, and supporting you, even though they're not wearing the uniform anymore? Um, it just goes to show how great our Borman program is and how much we care about each other. Um, no matter if you graduate or whatever the cause is, you're not playing anymore, you know, we still care about one another and they still care about us and they want to see us succeed. So it's so great to see um, some of those older girls come back. We miss them dearly, but, you know, it's different to see them not in uniform, but, you know, it is great to see them. From your perspective, what is it about this program that makes it such a tight-knit group that, that obviously lets you guys care about each other so much? What's in the water down there at Boardman? Um, you know, it's just trust in one another. We trust each other on and off the field. Um, we love each other and unconditionally. You know, it's like they're all my best friends, you know, everyone. We're just so close, and everyone is so kind to one another, and we have such a positive um, team culture, and we try to uh, carry that on year by year, and I feel like that really started um, when I was a freshman. The team culture was just so positive, and we tried to carry that on year by year by year, so just carry on the legacy. What are some of your favorite off the field memories with this group that you've gone gotten so close to? Um, some of my favorite off the field memories. So in Florida, uh, we all went and got ice cream after one of our big games. So that was super fun. We do that a lot. Ice cream. Uh, one of my years, uh, I think it was sophomore year after districts, <laughs> Coach Fred got us all pizza. And we all sat in the parking lot after our game in a, in a big circle and we ate pizza together. So that was super fun. Um, we like to do other fun activities like we go bowling and stuff together. Again, the toilet paper like every year for the seniors. And we also toilet paper friend's house, but we didn't get that yet. So <laughs> keep that yeah. on the down low. <laughs> yeah, that's um, what I tell him. Yeah. Although he'll probably see this interview and be tipped off a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah. When, when you think. When you think about things that you're so proud of that you've been able to do and accomplish, whether it be on the softball diamond, in the classroom, in athletics, outside of the school, anything in life, what are some things that when you graduate at Boardman that you're going to look back on and say, I'm proud of myself for getting this done in my high school career? Um, in high school in general, um, I'm extremely involved. Um, I'm in 10 clubs at school. Um, I'm held officer positions and a bunch of them so I'm super proud of myself for staying involved um, I stay on top of my grades all the time um, I try and strive to take higher classes and you know just be the best person I could be um, I've been taking college classes since I uh, since junior year so um, I'm super proud of myself for getting a lot of those credits done for next year so I could really be ahead of the game. Um, 
I'm also proud of myself for um, connecting with people and talking to people about my future job next year and future major and everything along that. So I'm just proud of myself. That's in the classroom, but softball wise, um, I'm proud of myself for being a good leader and supporting everyone. Um, and, you know, that's just not with stats and everything. That's just in general. But yeah, just along those lines. 10 clubs. My word. How <laughs> in the world do you juggle all of that? I know you also, you know, maintain a job. You have softball. You have a social life that you have to still be a kid every now and then. What do you, how do you do all that? Um, mainly just my calendar and my phone that, that honestly really helps me, but it is a lot. I mean, a lot of times I, sometimes I don't have things on the same day, but a lot of times I have multiple things on the exact same day at the exact same time. So honestly, just, um, I feel like for other people, you know, including myself, I've just become extremely comfortable with whoever is, um, in charge of that. Like I've, you know, Coach Fred knows that I'm involved in a lot, so he's very helpful in working with me when I have stuff like that, like clubs or I have to speak at stuff along those lines. It, it's a lot, a lot to juggle, but um, I wouldn't have it any other way. You got to be an extremely organized person. So my question is, have you always been that organized or did you kind of build organization tools as you got older? Um, I kind of already was pretty organized, um, but I feel like I really gained it through high school and middle school. Um, it's just kind of built and built and built, especially because the past two years I've joined so many clubs and I've been so involved with everything. And, you know, with college classes and high school classes and clubs and travel softball and high school softball and working and all that stuff, it gets to be a lot. So I've, I've slowly built it along the way. So the big question is with all that, when do you get your breaks and what do you do when you finally do get a, a time to take a breath? Honestly, I really don't ever <laughs> take a break if I'm being honest. Um, because I mean, last year I took school classes like for YSU over the summer. So, and I was working all the time and I had travel softball, but I feel like the summer is a little bit more of a break for me because um, I don't really have the stress of having clubs and stuff every single day, but, um, so that's a little bit better for me, but, um, it really just never ends basically. Maddie's going to be like, what's this free time I have? What's that? Yeah, yeah. Um, let's talk about off the softball field. Some of your favorite things to enjoy. Uh, what's your favorite TV show to binge watch? Um, I have a few different TV shows that I like to watch. I like to watch The Big Bang Theory. <laughs> I enjoy watching The Office. Um, I like Breaking Bad a lot, and I also like Friends. Um, I tend to watch those after school when I'm doing homework. In your little senior profile that was put up, it, it did say that you were a Breaking Bad fanatic. <laughs> yeah. uh, like, How many times have you gone through the series? Um, I think I've gone through maybe three times four times yeah i i've i think i've watched the office more i think i've watched the office like at least 10 times or something like that the office is easier to binge i'll i'll, yeah, I'll, I'll is, we'll just put it that is. it's a comedy you don't have to pay full attention to the episodes right um, it's a good show what about books that you've read as part of a class assignment what's your favorite book that wasn't something that you literally picked out but was something that was a class assignment at boardman um so honestly, I've since I've been in I've been in writing. Well, last year I took writing at YSC the past or for both semesters. So I took writing one in the fall and then writing two in the spring. So I'm not currently in an English class. Um, and last year I wasn't assigned either. But going back to sophomore year, um, I remember my favorite book that we read that I was assigned to read was Tuesdays with Maury um, for Mrs. Basista's honors English class. Um, that was such a great book. I really enjoyed reading that. We've been keeping a tally for all of our softball interviews, so you're gonna you might be a deciding vote right now. But uh, we have to have your softball ick because we have to keep the the tally up. So, what are some of the things that you see on a softball field, whether it be your teammates or someone else do, and it just gives you that cringe? Oh, there's there's many things that I can go into. Um, 
one of them being like when a girl has metal cleats on uh and she takes like her ghost fat or extremely mm. expensive fat and she goes she bangs it on the bottom of her metal cleat i hate that so much it just uh it makes me mad um what's another thing um i feel like when you have your ears hanging out of like your visor and they're not mm -hmm. tucked in i don't like that either um or when you have um your niche half of your knee showing with your socks i don't i mean i'm guilty of it too but <laughs> i just don't so, like it so you you hit two of them that were tied so i'm gonna ask you to pick one that's the most you the visor or the neevage which one gets you the most that way we can we can tally one over the other I, I think it's honestly the visor. The like visor, I can, okay. I can stand the knee because, I mean, when you're sliding and stuff, but I feel like the visor you can control more. Visor officially takes the lead. It's four to three. <laughs> uh, if you're keeping score at home and watching these uh, softball player profiles. Maddie, one of the things that we like to do with these player profiles, as you know, you've done plenty of them before. At the end of them, we like to let the athlete take the limelight off themselves a little bit shining on the people in their life that support them that are there for them that that you wouldn't be where you are without so i'm gonna let you do that now and and uh give you as much time to give out the thanks that you want to give out thank you um so i first of all i wanted to thank my both of my parents um for you know when i was younger i mean it doesn't really apply now but when i was younger driving me around every practice every game um every tournament for travel ball all of that stuff i mean you know, driving to Florida the past, or every other year, you know, it's just insane. So I'm so grateful, so thankful to have them both in my life. Um, they mean the world to me. Same with my younger sister. Um, it's been a blessing being able to play with her for my final year of softball. Um, so I'm so grateful. I'm so proud of her and all the work, hard work she's done. Um, I want to thank all of my high school coaches, Coach Fred, Coach Lindsay, uh, Coach Maz, Coach Page, Coach Ladner. Um, I hope I'm not missing anyone, but everyone there. Um, thank you so much for working with me in the past four years um, and, you know, guiding me to be the person I am today on and off the field. Um, obviously, my whole family and everything. Um, I would also like to thank my travel ball coaches, Coach Page again, um, Coach Gary and Coach George um, for also working with me through the off season um, and Coach George for working with the team um, despite having travel ball, also um, helping high school, um, you know, get to where they need to be during the off season. Um, you know, thank Boardman for letting me wear, <laughs> wear their name on the back of my jersey. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it. And obviously my teammates and everything too. I love everyone unconditionally, every single one of them. And I want to thank them for making it, you know, one of the best years yet. Maddie, we congratulate you on a fantastic career. We hope that it extends the senior season as long as it can. Wish you the best of luck in the rest of the way. We can't wait to talk to you in real soon. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you so much, Anthony.